Good morning. I would like to thank you all for being here. I'm really excited to be here and introduce you to the health management platform. I think we all probably agree that VA has had the best electronic health care record system between VISTA and CPRS. But we're being asked now to do things by our health care providers and our patients that could be difficult and sometimes maybe even impossible with our current systems. We also have some new requirements that are coming along as a result of IEHR and our, our interest and willingness to participate in the OSERA open source community and other development partnerships. So the health management platform or the HMP is part of sort of the modernization strategy for our electronic health record to make some of these things possible. Um, our presentation consists of three parts. First, we're going to share a video with you that features our executive sponsor, um, the Principal Deputy Undersecretary for Health, Dr. Robert Jesse. Um, next, uh, Christian Johnson will be doing a brief demo of the health management platform. We also have um, Dr. John Hickson, who will be available at our table to talk to you about um, the mobile application that he's developing for patients and some of the services that will support our need to um, capture and take advantage of that of patient entered data. So now we'd like to uh, watch the video. There are lots of reasons that VA provides the best health care anywhere. One of them is the information systems that give providers up-to-date, accurate clinical information about their patients. It's no boast to say that we have one of the most robust computerized patient record systems in the world. It's a fact. But we need to keep moving forward. VA is about to launch one of the most ambitious, transformative initiatives in its history, dramatically improving its information systems and giving clinicians the tools they need to deliver 21st century healthcare. Well, while you know me as the Principal Deputy Undersecretary for Health, I'm also a practicing cardiologist and I know CPRS and it's a great health IT system. It got us where we are today to be able to deliver the best care anywhere, but times are changing and healthcare delivery is changing and the VA is moving to a model of team-based care and we need a new health management platform that can deliver new functionality and new services that not only continue to support the needs of the provider, but also can interface with the patients and move us again into the new models of best care anywhere. VA IT staff are working on systems that go well beyond electronic records. They're developing a whole new health management platform, one that'll provide clinicians with a wealth of useful new tools and information, and allow patients to be much more involved in decisions about their health care. They're creating this system using the principles of health informatics, the science and discipline of effective use of information in patient care, clinical research, and medical education. It streamlines the process of patient care provides clinicians with accurate data in a timely manner, improves the quality of care, and reduces cost. The science of health informatics allows us to provide the clinicians the exact information they need, when they need it, so they can make better clinical decisions. We're using a new process called Agile, which allows the developers and clinicians to work side by side, so the developers hear what the clinicians need earlier in the process, and we can develop the software quickly and make it more useful for giving clinical care. The Health Informatics Initiative will have lots of benefits for provider and patient alike. Well, the Health Informatics Initiative will allow patients to be active participants in their care. They'll be able to enter their own data. They'll be able to enter their preferences. They'll be able to use this to communicate with their team members. They'll be able to follow their progress when we're treating chronic diseases like diabetes and hypertension. Well, why is this important? It's important because engaged patients uh, will be healthier patients. And it helps providers, too. It will provide a platform for the clinicians to be able to give better care to their patient through real-time decision support, through real-time visibility into the quality system so we, we can understand what we're doing while we're doing and not several months later. You can't have healthy patients without a healthy healthcare system. The new health management platform will retain many of the features that make our current system great already. The Health Informatics Initiative has reassembled the original CPRS team to take the next evolutionary step. This is a really exciting time to be in the VA. Uh, coupled with not only having the best providers everywhere, we will have the best health management platform anywhere. And this, in combination with other initiatives like home telehealth, will really be the game changers. We will redefine a healthcare network from being one that's 
made up of its bricks and mortar buildings to one that's defined by the patients and the providers and all the people who support their health care. And in doing that, we will truly move from providing the best care anywhere to providing the best care everywhere. We need you to help us transform our clinical information systems. Get involved. Tell us what you want. Tell us what you like. Tell us what you need. As Dr. Jesse said in the video, times in technology are changing. The health management platform is transforming and modernizing VA systems in several ways. First of all, using flexible uh, modular web technologies, we're creating a user interface that really supports that concept of team-based care. It presents data to providers in real time to the right person pertinent to the patients that they're dealing with. It enables um, connections across the entire healthcare team, unlike um, what we have now in CPRS doesn't really work that way that well. Um, and that's what Christian's going to be demonstrating for us in a few minutes. We're also working to enhance the connections between patients and their healthcare teams. Um, for example, Dr. Hickson has developed a mobile app that allows patients to enter their non-VA medications into the VA system. And then we, we capture that data and it, it will become available in the health management platform as well as for other applications. And then we'll work on expanding to other data domains as well from the non-VA medications. Um, Dr. Jesse also mentioned the concept of a healthy healthcare system. In HMP, we're developing ways to uh, make better use of the vast amounts of patient data that we have in VISTA. So system-wide analysis of data provides insight into our quality and our performance. It also allows us to provide clinical decision support to providers at the point of care. An example is the idea of patients like mine where as a provider's um, caring for patients, he may be presented with data that's been um, accumulated from the entire system, giving him information about treatments and outcomes uh, for patients that are similar to the ones that he's treating. Um, talking about technology, I won't go too deep, but um, we're really transforming also the way that we develop and deliver care. Um, we do have clinicians and developers working side by side. We used to do this in the VA, we kind of got away from it, and now we're right back to that. We're working very closely with four pilot sites, San Diego, Loma Linda, Portland, and Indianapolis. We're using agile methods for development. We're focusing on services and infrastructure that build on the strength of our existing VISTA systems. Um, this is allowing us to develop improved ways to access data, the ability to combine VA data with data from the Department of Defense and private healthcare organizations. And we do this in what we call the virtual patient record. It's not a new system of record, but it's a temporary data cache that allows us to combine data from multiple sources and provide some standards like HITSB standards, um, some document standards like C32, C83, for those of you that might be familiar with that. So the virtual patient record and other services and tools are allowing us to interface not only with new systems, but with other developer partners. So IEHR, the open source community, and some of our internal uh, research departments that have some great work going on that we would like to bring into real-time use. So now we're gonna have Christian provide us with a demo of the health management platform. Thanks, Marcia. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you for uh, coming to see our little showcase. Um, as Marcia said, you know, the VA has been highly successful uh, with its electronic medical record for many, many years, and it's been highly regarded in the community. Uh, but there is a great need to, to modernize our systems and bring them forward. You know, there's many new technologies out there, and they're ever-changing. Um, she also mentioned, too, that one of our goals has been to support the VA's transition to a team-based model of care. And so, as such, some of our current development work has really involved uh, the creation of tools to support team-based care and communication. And that's what we'd like to show you a little bit of today. What you're looking at on the screen is what we're calling the multi-patient view or multi-patient board. Now, when we talk about teams in the health management platform, we're talking not only of teams of healthcare workers, but also teams of patients as well. Because together, the healthcare workers and the patients make up the teams. Uh, the patient is the most important member of the team. Um, 
when we click on this box here on the multi-patient view, we can actually see who the people are that are caring for this patient. Uh, for those of you who maybe don't work directly in healthcare or haven't, sometimes it's difficult to ascertain who it is that's actually caring for this patient. Um, so at a glance, we can see who the people are who are involved in this patient's care. Now, the concept of a multi-patient board is important because as a healthcare worker, I can look at a group of patients and at a glance, look across my group of patients and see pertinent, relevant data about those patients. And why is that important? Well, because it helps me to better make decisions about those groups of patients, maybe to triage those patients in some way, or just to manage my workflow throughout my day. Um, switching over from, that was actually an example of an inpatient medicine board that would be more appropriate for a physician. Now we're switching over to a, a multi-patient board that could be used in an inpatient nursing setting. So again, the concept is still there. I'm looking, I'm a nurse, I'm looking across my group of patients for the day. I'm seeing relevant data information about those patients to help me manage my workflow and those patients. But the data itself is gonna be different on my nursing board than it is on my physician board. Now, this is all brand new functionality. A lot of what we're demanding of the developers doesn't currently exist. If it did, we wouldn't need them. <laughs> so. Just even this whole concept of teams and multi-patient boards has caused the developers to have to create an application and an infrastructure to support that. So what you're looking at on the screen now is actually the configuration manager for those teams. So here's where I would go if I wanted to create a new team, if I wanted to edit an existing team or perhaps delete an obsolete team. I could add patients onto my team here I can add actually roles within the team. And once I have the roles, I can assign users, doctors, nurses, um, you know, interns, residents, to the specific roles within those teams. And then finally, I can define what multi-patient view each of those roles will have when they open up that team. What I mean by that is the attending physician may have one view, the medical student might have a completely different view. Again, it, it goes to roles and responsibilities. Um, also on that team management, there's a couple of other things. I can manage the actual team positions. I can uh, uh, put the teams into different categories. And then, of course, the last thing on there is I can configure the actual boards, and that's the views that I will see for each of those teams. All right, we'll go back to the multi-patient board. Now, I just said that the multi-patient board is a great tool, and it is, at quickly kind of glancing across a group of patients. But we still know that there's a great need when I need to dive deeper into that patient's record, or perhaps to take an action on that patient, I'm going to have to open up the individual patient medical record. So we're going to actually open up my favorite veteran, Aviva Patient 6. So now we're in, we've, we've actually dropped down a level and we're in an individual patient record right now. Um, one of the concepts, the key concepts of the HMP, the health management platform, is the concept of modularity. By modularity, we mean that we can make it very highly customizable. So we can, it's very modular. It's not all set in stone. So we can add and remove information. We can add and remove applications within the, app, within the health management platform. Um, what Marsh is showing here is something we're just calling currently the mega menu. And this is a place where I could go and I could actually define my view. So if I don't need to see perhaps, I don't know why I wouldn't, but uh, the, the labs, the, patient, the lab results on the patient, I can actually remove those from my view or I can add them back. So I can customize my view from this mega menu, and this is also where we would anticipate that we would have the ability to plug in other outside development applications or even commercial vendor products at some point. Uh, one other thing I do want to point out on this page at the very top, what Marsh is hovering over, this was a little surprise the developers gave us. Um, we had talked about it a long time ago, and they delivered it as a surprise. But this is a timeline graph. And what you're seeing there is the spikes on the timeline graph. That's where there's, that's um, measuring the amount of activity in the medical record for that patient. So if I see no activity, and then all of a sudden I see a large spike, I know the patient probably had a patient visit or perhaps an inpatient stay. 
Ultimately, though, what we're looking for on this tool and this graph is to make this timeline a navigational tool so I could navigate through the medical record based on those dates. Um, let's leave there. Let's quickly look at med, med review here, medications. Um, scroll down a little bit. Um, again, we have a lot of this information in our current EMR, but I just wanted to point out that where we can, we've tried to augment it. Right now you're seeing the list of outpatient medications and a little graph next to the medication showing the med history refill. What you don't want to see as a provider is a large amount of red. That means the patient has not been refilling their medication, which could mean that they're actually not taking the medication as prescribed. Also available here is um, what we're calling the action box. As Marsha hovers over this, you can see this is actually a contextually aware action box. So based on this data object, which is a medication, and the status of that medication, I'm presented with only one option, which is either to renew this DC medication or do nothing else, or I could actually create a task associated with this medication. And why would I want to do that? Well, let's say I decided to discontinue this medication or change the dose on this medication based on some lab results. I might want to create a task to remind me to call the patient and convey that information to them. Also, we have some quick links to some online reference resources as well if I want to look up more information or get perhaps some patient educational materials on this. Moving quickly over to just the lab review. Um, again, this is just showing that we can bring in all of the lab results for the patient. Um, if we click on one of them, we can now see a graph showing the trend of the lab for that particular item. Looking quickly again at procedures and documents, this was really just a way to prove that this data that we've pulled out of VISTA now um, was all available to us. We need to validate that the data we're getting is complete and that it's accurate. So we can pull in all of the patient information from VISTA, but the nice thing is now um, we can organize it in any way that makes sense to us. So if I wanna see all text documents in one place, I can do that. If I want to split them out into, say, surgeries and procedures and you know, uh, progress notes, I can do that as well. Oh, and we're going to search, yes. Um, <laughs> thank you, we're getting there. I know, I'm, the clock's ticking down. Um, so search, that was um, one of the first things that the development team did. Um, when, once they had extracted all this VISTA data out, they wanted to prove um, some of the new capabilities they could do with it. So search was one of those. They actually used an open source search engine called Lucene, so it was free, um, to apply against the data that we have in our virtual patient record. So you can see when actually we looked for glucose, we were able to find it not only as a lab result for glucose, but we actually can search the entire patient record in anywhere where glucose exists, including this nurse's progress note. Uh, tasks, I mentioned tasks a minute ago. Our concept here is that we're able to create a task and then associate it with a patient. Again, there's multiple ways that people use to have to remember things that they need to do for a patient. Well, this allows us an electronic tool to actually create a task. I can give it a description, I can give it a title, and I can give it a due date so that um, it's there in the patient record. Not only can I see it, but anyone who is looking at that patient can see it. And then finally is something we call ping. Ping is actually an internal instant messaging machine. Um, and what it does is it, it allows providers to instant message back and forth in a secure manner. And by secure I mean that it is secure behind the firewall, uh, it's password protected by your login, and so uh, uh, sensitive patient information could be shared via via this instant messaging. And with that, that was our quick whirlwind demo. We have 30 seconds left, and I'm gonna turn it back over to Marsha. <laughs> There's so much more we could show you. We really had to cruise through that very quickly, but I would invite you to visit our table. We can show you more in depth what we're doing. We have some handouts, and please take a look at what Dr. Hickson is developing. It's very exciting. Thank you very much for your time.